No wind, no wind. I'm motoring the whole way. But the RPM just started dropping for some reason. There it goes. I don't know what's going on, but now the engine is uh, acting up in neutral too. Everything looking good? Roger, we'll keep a lookout. Hey everybody, welcome to a brand new episode. Uh, really exciting stuff this time. We're actually headed out to Catalina. We're getting the boat off the dock, so we're going to have a good time out there. We're going to see some diving. We're going to see some bottom cleaning, a couple other small projects. But uh, yeah, uh, no winds today. It's looking like we're probably going to motor all the way across over to Avalon uh, and just put the mainsail up for stability. Uh, we're going to head over to Yankovic to take some fuel first before we head over there, and then we'll start getting out of here because it's getting a little bit late. I hope, I hope to get there before it starts uh, getting dark. But uh, yeah, we'll see. So uh, let's go. Yeah, this is my rigger Landon Scott. He's here to install my mainsail. What's the wind gonna be today? It's gonna be zilch. No wind? No wind. I'm motoring the whole way. I was very fortunate to have my buddy Landon come down and help me with some things before my departure. Some things are a little tough to do by yourself, like putting on your mainsail after it's been out for a few repairs. Even jobs such as lifting the dinghy onto its rack can be a back-breaking challenge by yourself. But to be honest, I think it had a fair amount of water in the chambers at this point. This is taking far too long. Can we come help you? Yeah. After we finally got the dinghy sorted out, Landon departed and I completed my final checks. It was time to light the fires, kick the tires, and get this baby underway. about an hour into our journey across the uh, San Pedro Bay. It's uh, pretty nice out here. It's pretty calm, no wind. So we're motoring all the way across, which is fine. It's nice. The sun's finally starting to come out, which is helpful because my solar shower right here is, uh, you know, starting to warm up, hopefully. I don't know how much longer the sun will be out, but uh, hopefully it stays outside. I would rather not take a cold shower tonight. 
But yeah, I'm up here on the bow just hanging out. It's pretty noisy in the cockpit with the engine, so up here I can see everything and just relax. Three hours to go. Well, I spoke too soon. Uh, oh, there's a whale right there. Just breached. Whoa. I'm kind of glad we stopped. Oh, there he is again. Wow. I'm up one more time, buddy. So cool. Well, I was up there on the bow just two seconds ago, saying how good life is, and then all of a sudden I heard the RPM starting to drop on the on the engine. Pressure looked good. The temperature was fine. The temperature was at 160, but the RPM just started dropping for some reason. So I began looking for basic clues. All the fluids were at correct levels. There were no signs of trouble in the bilge and all pressures and temperatures were reading correct. At one point, I even got in the water, swam under the boat and made sure the prop shaft spun freely. Unfortunately, the cameras did not capture my efforts and the footage was lost. I managed to get the engine started easily, however it did not like operating at higher RPM, especially while in gear. Listen here as the engine eventually dies when I throttle down. Oh, there it goes. Alright, let's see what happens when we give it some juice again. headway again. I really want to get to Avalon. I don't want to go back. I brought the RPM, the cruising RPM, down to about 1700. It seems to be doing okay at that RPM. So yeah, I mean, we're making about four and a half knots. Our ETA is now saying about uh, 615 p.m. I was lucky to have service, you know. I was kind of looking up some things online and I read that, you know, the engine is requiring more fuel flow. Yeah, when in gear. The engine is requiring a higher fuel flow, fuel flow when there's load on it, so maybe uh, the fuel filter needs to be changed, maybe the fuel line service being restricted somehow, and uh, I just I don't know how to change the fuel filter right now. I, I have a spare fuel filter, I'm pretty sure, uh, but I don't know how to change it, and I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that out here. If we could proceed at this speed and this RPM, the rest of the way to Avalon, I'll be happy. Five minutes later. So, I've just radioed for a vessel assist to come tow me back to San Pedro. I don't know what's going on, but now the engine is uh, acting up in neutral too. The RPMs are bouncing around and the engine just ends up dying. So, yeah, of course we're right here halfway between Avalon and San Pedro. So we'll be getting back to San Pedro and under nightfall. Uh, Tubbo US, 30 foot Catalina, go ahead. Yeah, Roger, got about another two miles from those, uh, that current position that I got from you. The interest of you. Roger, we'll keep a lookout. Thank you. I didn't think they could tow this fast. This is pretty, uh, pretty wild. We're going 8.5 knots right now. I figured we would do it. I figured we'd be doing like something like three, three knots at most on the way back. But hey, can't complain about this. back in my slip in San Pedro now. <sighs> the 
you know, it sucks. We just, I made it halfway. It could have been any worse. We got exactly halfway. You know, it just sucks because there's like this feeling of defeat, you know. Like, I'm supposed to be, you know, a cruiser, you know. We're, we're, I'm supposed to be self-reliant. I'm supposed to be on my own. Having Sito tell you back to your slip is not exactly cruiser style. So, yeah, I'm kind of bummed out about that. I just have to have spare filters on board from now on. I don't know why I didn't have spare filters on in the beginning, but... Yeah, that was kind of stupid of me. But, uh, yeah, tomorrow morning we'll get to the root cause of this, and we'll, we'll uh, look into it. But I'm just, like, so beat right now. I'm so tired. So, I'm just gonna go to bed here in the slip. I'm not even gonna go home. I'm just gonna go to sleep, and tomorrow morning we'll take a look at things, and... Alright. See you guys in the morning. Alright guys, it's a new day, we're here in the slip, had a good night's sleep, and I'm feeling better. The, the last couple weeks working on this boat, I think I've been focusing on the wrong things. I think I should be more focused on like the critical systems, such as uh, the fuel system, the coolant system, the oil system for the main engine. I should be focused on the electrical system, but instead I've been focusing on uh, projects like working on the toilet, replacing hose, uh, thinking about doing fiberglass repair when I, you know, should be thinking about like, oh, what to do if, you know, one of our fuel filters clog? How many spares should I have on board? How do I change those fuel filters? These are all things I should be thinking about rather than doing projects like working on fiberglass or replacing hose for the toilet. Uh, with that being said, um, I do want to try to uh, change those fuel filters today. And if that works, possibly try and go back over to Catalina. So, uh, yeah, um, West Marine opens at uh, 9 o'clock. It's um, 8 o'clock now, so I, I saw they have a, fil a fuel filter in stock. We'll go to West Marine, get the part, and uh, change it out, and uh, go from there. All right, guys, I have returned from uh, West Marine and Home Depot. I picked up a couple of tools from uh, Home Depot and some, uh, some cups to uh, help contain the uh, fuel when we change the fuel filters. At West Marine they only had two uh, two primary fuel filters so uh, I picked them both up and uh, later I'll probably go pick up some spares from another West Marine local. So yeah, let's get to it. So I began the process of changing the engine's primary fuel filter. Since the fuel lines didn't have valves between the tank and the filter, I used a pair of vice grips to squeeze the rubber hose line shut. I also did this on the discharge side of the filter. The filter came off pretty easy with a filter wrench while avoiding any fuel spills into the bilge. Once I got the filter off, it was time for a close-up inspection of the fuel filter's glass bowl. all that sediment there. Seeing sediment in the bowl was a good sign, meaning that a clogged filter was more than likely the issue. My best guess to what happened is that the fuel tank was stirred up when I took fuel before departure. All the dirty bits that were stirred up during fueling eventually made it to the fuel lines and then to the fuel filter. I also checked the fuel tank, and it actually looked pretty clean, despite all the sediment being in the primary fuel filter bowl. 
Soon after, my buddy Landon was back to help me purge the air out of the fuel lines. If you don't want to pour liters of fuel into your bilge, you need two people for this job. One person to flip the ignition switch in the cockpit, which turns on the fuel pump, and one person to stand at the engine to adjust the bleeder bolt. After bleeding the air, we gave the engine a 30 minute test run at different RPM and gears. It was a great success. Excellent work, Landon. Good morning, guys. It is a brand new day, and uh, we are going to actually head to Avalon. We're going to try this again. Hopefully, we're not going to have any failures this time. Um, I checked the weather this morning. There's a major low pressure system coming in Tuesday afternoon. So it's Monday today and uh, the wind shouldn't get past about 20 knots, so I'm not too worried about that. As long as we get to Avalon before around 1600, mm -hmm. the wind won't pick up uh, that much. It's not going to be too heavy. Um, mm -hmm. So the low pressure system comes in tomorrow around uh, 1400. As long as we get back to Pedro before that time, we shouldn't have any major issues because like there's a big big low pressure system coming in wednesday we're going to see you know 35 to 40 knots sustained winds so it's just going to be a one night trip it's uh, 9 a.m right now uh, hopefully underway by 10 o'clock i just i want to get over there i want to redo this trip i need to make it over there for myself since i was such a failure last time and we're making up for it today so let's get the engines fired up and let's do this I'd also like to add that I went out to West Marine this morning and bought a bunch of spare Raycor filters, primary fuel filters. Since yesterday we determined that that was the issue for the engine stalling a clogged primary fuel filter, I went ahead and bought a whole bunch of spares. So now we could change those filters out while we're underway if we have any issues, if they arise. Solar shower heating up here. Let's take a look at the temperature. Oh yeah. Can you see that? A nice reading of 92 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh yeah, baby. We're looking real good. Yeah. Nice day out here. Definitely won't look like this tomorrow though. The rest of the day's passage was sunny, warm, and largely uneventful, but it's important that I not forget the lesson I learned over the past few days. At sea, you must be ready for anything to go wrong, whether it is as simple as a clogged fuel filter or your entire rig collapsing. You must be prepared for these situations. To put it simply, I was not prepared for a mechanical failure. I didn't have the spare parts or the knowledge to fix the issue at hand and I was left stranded like an idiot in the middle of San Pedro Channel. I was absolutely gutted to have to call Vessel Assist to tow me back into port, but as cliche as it sounds, smooth seas never make a skilled sailor, and I'm glad the seas got rough close to home. Next time this happens, I might not be so fortunate to be in reach of help. Maybe I'll be in the Sea of Cortez, maybe even halfway to Hawaii, but one thing's for sure, the weekend's lesson is not soon to be forgotten and I'll sure as hell be prepared for next time. Well, we're here. It's a miracle. Uh, but unfortunately, that's gonna do it for this episode here. The next week you will see the bottom cleaning process and uh, the trip back to San Pedro and a couple more projects. So yeah, thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time.